I'm Alex and you're on the Weirdcraft channel. Today we are getting ready for seer battles. We have a few miniatures with maritime theme, a ship and of course a sea monster. Honestly, I have no idea where exactly I got this model of the ship. I tried to find some links to where I might have obtained this ship, but I had no luck. So, if you happen to know the other or have a link to where this ship is sold, please share it and I'll gladly credit the author. As for the miniatures which I will be painting in this video, I know exactly where I got them. This is an already familiar author, and maybe you saw his models in the previous video, Miniatures Blueprint. I'm subscribed to him for a long time and each and every release he's bringing some great and awesome miniatures in my collection. So all the links in the description below, please consider to check it out if you might be interested. Well, let's get down to business. We will start with preparing the ship. Since the files were printed quite a while ago and separately, some elements don't fit perfectly. I decided to fix these inaccuracies using green stuff. And to be upfront, I did not like it at all. It was my first experience with green stuff and I had seen mixed reviews about it. Someone praise its versatility and convenience, while others criticize it for many things. I don't know and not really sure, maybe it is because mine was purchased quite a while ago and might have gone bad. I'm not really sure if this is possible for this thing. But I found the material extremely inconvenient. I tried various approaches, using water, not using water, wearing gloves, not wearing gloves, trimming edges and leaving them as is in place, still, the material seemed challenging for me. So my personal opinion, I don't like it. After doing my best, I filled in the most obvious uh, junctions between parts and let it all dry. Yes, if you haven't used green stuff, it takes around 24 hours to harden. Some guys even recommend to leave it for 30 hours. So while all of that are hardening, let's focus on the miniatures. And obviously I started with priming. I found zenithal priming extremely convenient for this task. First a black coat, then we add a contrasting white. I decide to use an airbrush and Vallejo black primer. It is convenient, time saving, almost odorless and I am quite satisfied with the results. Some of the miniatures I paint using the slap chop method and speed paint from army painter. Later adding some highlights and enhancement with Vallejo paint. I won't show the entire process since sometimes during painting the angles aren't ideal for filming and it is much more convenient to turn the figure at some odd angles. I chose a rather unusual color schema perhaps, but on the other hand these are pirates. The embodiment of freedom. And this freedom is demonstrating in everything. An apparently silly outfit can be a warning to adversaries. Yes, it's bad for camouflage, but when was the last time you saw pirates trying to blend in at sea? Pirates aren't seals that might need to remain unnoticed. On the contrary, they need to stand out, instill fear and awe in those they intend to plunder. So no common theme, colorful outfit, decorations and gold. Because we have a crew of successful pirates. For the metallic parts I took cool mixes from the Mikita Miniatures channel and the results looks really great. As you may have noticed, I recently got myself some contrast paint from Citadel. You know what? I really like how those colors apply. So in the future I plan to explore this direction as well. When it comes to the captain, I decide to use not only speed paint and contrast paint, but also the classic methods of painting miniatures with color mixing. Moreover, later on for the turtle I painted almost the entire miniature using the classic method with layering. And I was very pleased with the results. 
let's take a break from miniatures and return back to the ship. Having made sure that the green stuff has hardened, I primed the ship with grey primer from Ken and began painting it. Since the ship is not very detailed compared to the miniatures, I decided using simple and basic acrylic paint would be more logical given the size of the ship than expensive Vallejo paint. The brown paint I used for the tavern diorama matched the color perfectly. If you missed the diorama video, the link should appear in the annotations. Also I will put it in description so you can check it out later. In general, the ship is not a miniature, but more like a part of terrain, a playable terrain. So it shouldn't steal all the attention and if it is painted a bit lightly, it will give it a kind of charm. In short, I took a big brush, paint and start coloring. Of course, it would have been much easier to paint everything separately rather than in an assembled state. But still the ship was glued long time before I decided that whole video would be dedicated to it. So we continue. It takes so long. Painting this part of the ship with a brush seems like eternity. And in the end I just gave up. I just thought it would be much easier and faster to finish this process using an airbrush. And I was right. After several attempts to prepare the right mixture of paint and paint thinner, the process went much faster. I even enjoyed it. Although before that I was very close to giving up halfway through painting. And you would never have seen the final result. So when the entire ship was done, I painted the cabin window white using an airbrush for a kind of OSL effect. Although the scale of the ship model is a bit small compared to the miniatures. Anyway, the ship looks just giant compared to all my other miniatures and terrains, so it should be completely fine. Next, I decided to compare the different shades of black as it was decided to paint the sails black. I used expensive Valia who paint the top sails row and simple acrylic paint from dollar store. I don't know how it looks on video, but in reality the difference was not significant. And again I decided to use a cheaper paint. With the choice of paint settled, let's move on the painting. Again. I wasn't super careful for the same reason. The ship is a part of the playable terrain. To finalize the painting, I resorted to the dry brushing technique. And finally, the time has come to see a monster. Another mix of speed paint colors was used to create the watercolor, which in my opinion turned out great. I covered the teeth with contrast paint Gilliman Flesh. Later fixed everything with varnish and then went over with the basic color from Citadel Margast Bone. I decided to paint the tentacles using shinish purple and to give the effect of wetness, all elements of the monster were covered with gloss varnish. To finalize the ship it was covered with matte varnish. And just literally in a few seconds you will see the final results, but before that, let me say a big thanks for everyone who is watching, if you like this video consider to press the like button and hit the subscribe one if you like my content. It motivates me to do more and more great content and also put a comment, I really enjoy to read them. So. Thank you for watching and let's not waste time and move to the grand final reveal!